the detail, the clarity, the color, it all just hit me all at once that yeah, Webb is a next generation observatory. It's gonna you know, change astronomy forever. The James Webb Telescope just sent a terrifying message and the results processed by scientists have left all officials at NASA in abrupt silence. The largest optical telescope in space has spent years observing multiple components of our final frontier, and several phenomena have been discovered, all thanks to the JWST. However, this recent image it sent has turned out to be the biggest shock in the world of science and astronomy. What terrifying image did the James Webb Telescope send? Could it have photographed an alien spaceship on the edge of space? Join us as we explore how the James Webb Space Telescope just sent terrifying new images that we weren't shown. The National Aeronautic and Space Administration's $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope was launched from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. And after it arrived at its new cosmic home, the Infrared Observatory has provided scientists and astronomers with some truly breathtaking views of the cosmos. As the largest and most powerful space telescope to date, scientists were thrilled to see the first scientific images of the telescope. But what they saw almost petrified them. When JWST turned its instruments to the iconic pillars of creation, the observatory grasped the famous dust clouds in incredible detail. Found in the constellation Serpens, approximately 7,000 light years from Earth, the pillars of creation are part of the Eagle Nebula. The large clouds of gas and dust were initially photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995, and it was the pillars of creation's remarkable beauty that brought them to light from then on. The new photograph taken by JWST showed the pillars in even more detail. Several stars which were not seen in the previous image taken by Hubble are seen shining in the image, and some were born just a few hundred thousand years ago. Well, that's one scientific breakthrough, but come to think of it, what if these are landmarks built by aliens? Apart from making mouth-watering discoveries that fascinate scientists and astronomers, the James Webb Telescope has also captured strange phenomena in space that even scientists cannot explain. One such strange capture is the mysterious concentric rings found around a distant star that astronomers still can't understand completely. The image was released on Twitter by a citizen scientist named Judy Schmidt. The moment the Twitter community saw the image, it barreled into a torrent of comments and head-scratching. The image posted on Twitter featured a star known as WR140, which was seen surrounded by regular ripple-like circles that gradually faded away. One thing in the image caught major attention, however. The circles are not perfectly round, but they had a somewhat square-like feel to them. This instantly sparked theories about likely alien origins. And Schmidt was not the only scientist that bothered about this image. Mark McCorian, an interdisciplinary scientist at the JWST Science Working Group and a science advisor to the European Space Agency, termed the feature bonkers in a Twitter thread. Only a little more than six months after the web team released the first observations from the Grand Observatory, scientists are already challenged to rewrite their theories about the early universe. We looked into the very early universe for the first time and had no idea what we were going to find, Leia said in a statement. It turns out we found something so unexpected, it actually creates problems for science. It calls the whole picture of early galaxy formation into question. James Webb Space Telescope's stunning phantom galaxy picture looks like a wormhole. A fresh image based on brand new deep space data appears to show a wormhole spinning before our very eyes. The appropriately named Phantom Galaxy glows eerily in a new image by Judy Schmidt, based on James Webb Space Telescope data obtained almost a million miles away from our planet using the observatory's mid-infrared instrument. The image highlights the dust lanes in the galaxy, which are more properly known as NGC 628 or Messier 74, dubbed the perfect spiral by some astronomers because the galaxy is so symmetrical. The Phantom Galaxy is scientifically interesting because of the intermediate mass black hole scientists believe is embedded at its heart. The galaxy has been imaged professionally many times before, including by space observatories such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. However, what makes Webb's imagery stand apart from these past efforts is the mid-infrared range that highlights cosmic dust along with the power of its unique 18-segment hexagonal mirror and deep space location. 
Webb observed M74 earlier this week. The data was also shared on Twitter by Gabrielle Brammer, an astronomer at the Cosmic Dawn Center in the Niels Bohr Institute at the University of Denmark. Galaxies nearly as massive as the Milky Way and full of mature red stars seem to be dispersed in deep field images obtained by the James Webb Space Telescope during its early observation campaign, and they gave astronomers a headache. These galaxies described in a new study based on Webb's first data release are so far away that they appear only as tiny reddish dots to the powerful telescope. By analyzing the light emitted by these galaxies, astronomers established that they were viewing them in our universe's infancy, only 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. Now, such early galaxies are not in themselves surprising. Astronomers expected that the first star clusters sprung up shortly after the universe moved out of the so-called Dark Ages. The first 400 million years of existence were when only a thick fog of hydrogen atoms permeated space. But the galaxies found in the web images appear shockingly big, and the stars in them were too old. The new findings are in conflict with existing ideas of how the universe looked and evolved in its early years, and they also don't match earlier observations made by Webb's less powerful predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. We had specific expectations for the type of galaxies that live in the early universe. They are young and small. Joe Lea, assistant professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State and one of the authors of the study, said in an email. Kristen McQuinn, an astronomer at Rutgers University in New Jersey and lead scientist on the research project, said in a statement from the Space Telescope Science Institute in Maryland, which operates the observatory. Many of the other nearby galaxies are intertwined and entangled with the Milky Way, which makes them harder to study. And McQuinn pointed out a second reason WLM is an intriguing target. Its gas is very similar to that of galaxies in the early universe, without any elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. But whereas the gas of those early galaxies never contained heavier elements, the gas in WLM has lost its share of these elements to a phenomenon called galactic winds. These winds stem from supernovas or exploding stars. Because WLM has so little mass, these winds can push material out of the dwarf galaxy. In this image of WLM, McQuinn describes seeing an array of individual stars at different points in their evolution with a variety of colors, sizes, temperatures, and ages. The image also shows clouds of molecular gas and dust called nebulas, which contain the raw material for star formation within WLM. And in background galaxies, JWST can spot fascinating features like massive tidal tails, which are structures made of stars, dust, and gas created by gravitational interactions between galaxies. JWST's main goal in studying WLM is to reconstruct the dwarf galaxy's history of star birth. Low-mass stars can live for billions of years, which means that some of the stars that we see in WLM today formed in the early universe, McQuinn said. By determining the properties of these low-mass stars like their ages, we can gain insight into what was happening in the very distant past. The work complements the study of galaxies in the early universe that JWST is already facilitating, and it also allows the telescope's operators to check the calibration of the NIRCAM instrument that captured the sparkling image. That's possible because both the Hubble Space Telescope and the now-retired Spitzer Space Telescope have studied the dwarf galaxy before, and scientists can compare the images. We're using WLM as a sort of standard for comparison to help us make sure we understand the JWST observations, McQuinn said. We want to make sure we're measuring the star's brightness really, really accurately and precisely. We also want to make sure that we understand our stellar evolution models in the near-infrared. McQuinn's team is currently developing a software tool that everyone will be able to use that can measure the brightness of all the individually resolved stars in the near-camera images. This is a bedrock tool for astronomers around the world, she said. If you want to do anything with resolved stars that are crowded together in the sky, you need a tool like this. The James Webb Telescope has blown our minds away with these images, and scientists believe that there's a lot more to be discovered in the final frontier with this telescope. Which of these images grabbed your attention the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.